Uh, Martin, uh, you have done a review of uh, the lit scientific literature of B2B buying behavior. And what is this topic about? And, and why is it important for business managers? So this topic is about uh, the fact that uh, organizations, or what we try to understand is how organizations buy um, and also we try to understand what mistakes they potentially make uh, in terms of you know maybe simplifying assumptions or heuristics that they use uh, or biases that they have in their decision making. Why is that important? Uh, I think it's important because in practice we can we do observe a lot of kind of strange aspects to, to organizational buying. We observe a lot of potential mistakes that, that firms actually make and we know very little about um, how these kind of mistakes come about. Yes, so do you have an example of... Uh, of yeah. uh, One example that, that I find very interesting is what's called the, the energy efficiency gap. Uh, and the energy efficiency gap is... Uh, there are studies that show that um, for a lot of firms it could be very good economic de decision to invest more into saving of energy. Uh, but the firms don't do that, even though it's economically kind of the best way to do. Um, and a reason for that could be, it's very difficult to kind of see what the exact reasons are, but one reason that we see is that, um, uh, that firms focus too much on the purchasing price. So when they compare different technologies, they look at what is the price today. They don't consider what are the costs of this technology in the long run. So they focus on saving money today inst instead of saving more money within 10 years. And that would be a bias. Some people might find this surprising because um, at least uh, it seems to me a common understanding is that compared to consumer buying processes, uh, business buying processes are, is a more rational decision-making process. But that's not what you argue. And why is hmm. that? Yeah, that's not what we argue. We argue, oh, that's what we argue. We argue that kind of um, organizations can, can also make mistakes. Uh, we think they are different from the, the mistakes that organizations make can be different from those mistakes that, that individuals make. Because, for instance, in organizations, groups play a larger role in decision making. So there's multiple individuals making decisions, and that can affect the, the, their decision making. Yeah. So, in, in summary, what are your findings? Yeah. So, uh, kind of, yeah. so, what we look at and what we try to identify is kind of heuristics or biases that, that firms use and that kind of could lead to decisions that are not economically optimal. And one of those biases is that we find that firms seem to kind of have a preference for maintaining social relationships. Um, so kind of firms tend to prefer suppliers um, that their, where their own employees like the sales person um, of, of the other firm. So in the end, they choose the supplier that their employees like in terms of the, the employees, uh, and they don't necessarily choose the supplier that would be the best economic fit for their situation. Or another bias could be a bias towards existing relationships. Uh, if firms are in existing relationships with a supplier, that's kind of their anchor. Um, and kind of uh, when they search for a new supplier, they take the old relationship as kind of the benchmark. Um, so they tend to be, there tends to be a lot of inertia uh, and they might change suppliers less, and less often than they should. Yeah. So, what are the practical implications for managers? I think of this. Yeah, I think uh, kind of it, first of all, it's very early. We are very early in the research, so um, kind of it's very difficult to pinpoint very specific managerial implications. Um, but I think there's there's implications for purchasing managers on the one side, uh, and there's implications for salespeople on the other side. Uh, and for purchasing managers, and uh, and let me take the example of of another bias, and that bias is that people. Um, or that firms tend to choose suppliers that minimize the risk of their own em their their employees. So firms um, employees like to pick suppliers that don't affect where their career is not kind of in any kind of risk. Um, and uh, for purchasing managers, that means if they want to um, get better purchasing decisions, um, they have to create an, an incentive system. Um, where the decision, the supplier decision, does not create some kind of personal risk for the purchasing manager. Um, so, kind of, the purchasing manager should not have the impression um, 
if I choose the wrong supplier, I will lose my job or I will have problems in advancing in my career. So they, there should be some kind of, you know, safe environment in a way um, on the purchasing side. Um, on the sales and marketing side uh, from the supplier firm, um, this means if, if they market their product, they should emphasize how it reduces the personal risk uh, of, the, the employee, of the employees in the purchasing firm. And uh, one example is this, this famous kind of phrase, nobody ever got fired for buying IBM. IBM was very successful in est establishing a strong brand um, because you know, if you purchase an I the idea was if you purchase a product from IBM and it doesn't work, it's not your fault because you know it's from IBM. So if IBM can't make it work, then nobody could have. But if you purchase the same product from a kind of independent, unknown firm, uh, you could maybe take blame because I said, why didn't you buy this from some kind of well-known brand?